Hello everybody, Namaskaram to all the beautiful people out there. Hope you guys are doing amazingly well. Welcome back to another lesson of English with Ashish. And guys, today in this lesson, we are going to master something. We are going to learn something that is going to take your English to the next level. That is actually going to improve your English a lot. And the topic is reduced noun clauses. We are going to learn, we are going to master how to reduce a noun clause. So we are going to master this topic. We are going to learn everything about it. This is going to be something new. It's going to be interesting. It's going to be fun, informative. Make sure you watch it until the end. If you guys are new to the channel, you can subscribe to the channel. Press that notification button as well. So that every single time I publish a lesson, you get notified. I'm excited as always. Anne guys are too. Let's do this. All right, everybody. Let's start with understanding what exactly a noun clause is. Let's just start with this, and then we'll understand what exactly a reduced noun clause is, and how we can reduce a noun clause to a noun or a noun phrase, or what can we reduce a noun clause to. All right, we'll understand that. So let's start with understanding what exactly a noun clause is. So what is a noun clause? A noun clause is a dependent clause. A uh, a clause that does not give a complete meaning on its own right so it's a dependent clause that works as a noun it's a clause what type of a clause dependent clause that functions that works as a noun so let's look at the definition a noun clause is a dependent clause right that functions that works as a noun in a sentence right so uh, just like a noun it can function as the subject of a sentence object of the verb object of a preposition subject complement and sometimes as an object complement as well right so it's a noun clause is a dependent clause that functions as a noun now if you just want to master noun clauses i have a lesson on that as well detailed lesson what's the lesson the link is in the description i have a detailed uh, post on my website as well the link is in the description as well www.englishwithashish.com right now noun clauses generally start with the following subordinating conjunctions and these are the conjunctions what that who whom where uh, where why when how if when these are usually the conjunctions noun clause starts with now let's look at some examples of noun clauses and understand how they function in a sentence so that we have a better understanding or what noun clauses are or how they function or how to reduce a noun clause to a noun phrase what is that we'll talk about that as well now example number 1 i can't eat what you're eating i cannot eat eat what you can eat something i cannot eat what what you're eating so you're eating something and i do not know the name of that particular thing or i do not want to mention it so i'm going to use a noun clause i'm going to use a dependent clause to refer to that name all right i cannot eat eat what what you are eating so what is a subordinating conjunction you is the subject of this clause uh, r is the helping verb and eating is the main verb there you have a dependent clause working as the object of the verb eat this is working as the object of the verb so it's working as a noun an object can be a noun or a pronoun so here it's working as the object as a noun object of the verb eat you can eat something or somebody not literally like you you can eat somebody as well if you want to but you don't do that since you're a human being second example she is thinking about what she should do with her life she subject is helping verb thinking main verb thinking about preposition right and there we have the object of the preposition in the form of a noun phrase sorry noun clause working as the object of the preposition about she is thinking about what thinking you can think about something right or somebody you can think about something or somebody that particular object is going to be a noun or a pronoun all right now here we don't have a noun just a name or a pronoun we have a noun clause working as the object of the preposition about working as a noun she is thinking about what she should do with her life so we don't have a particular word for that we are using a complete uh, clause a dependent clause to refer to something which is basically a noun she is thinking about what she is thinking about what she should do with her life what she should do with her life 
all right conjunction subject helping verb main verb with a live preposition phrase a modifying phrase all right third example here it's working as the object of the preposition above your problem is subject subject uh, linking verb this is the linking verb a type of a main verb your problem is that you don't listen to anyone this is a noun clause working as the subject complement right renaming the subject giving a new name to the subject your problem now what is your problem i'm just going to uh, name the problem that you don't listen to anyone that is the problem right that you don't listen to anyone is a noun a clause uh, working as the subject complement giving a name to the subject coming after this linking verb is your problem equals to this is your problem that you don't listen to anyone so as i said a noun clause is a dependent clause that functions as a noun just like a noun it can function as the subject of a sentence i can say what you're eating is unhygienic what you're eating what you're eating is uh, tasty or unhygienic here it's working as the in this particular sentence it's going to work as the subject of the sentence so it can uh, it can work as the subject object right object of a preposition subject complement and also object complement I have lessons on all these topics. If you want to master these topics separately, you can do that. We have lessons on the channel. The links are in the description. You can watch them later after this video, right? You can watch it right now as well if you want to, but I won't recommend that. All right. So now we know what a noun clause is. Now we know uh, how they function, how noun clauses function, right? We have uh, seen some examples. We've understood them. Now let's talk about what a reduced noun clause is and how to reduce a noun clause or why do we reduce a noun clause? So a reduced noun clause is something that is formed out of a noun clause by reducing some parts from the noun clause. So let's suppose uh, we have a subordinating conjunction, right? We have a subject. Of the noun clause so we're just writing the elements we generally have in a noun clause so we have a subordinating conjunction we have subject we have a verb right um, all right so let's just have three uh, these three elements right so how can we reduce this we can take this uh, out and we can take this out and we can just uh, form a phrase using this verb we can add something before it we can use the particle to before it Right, we can change this uh, verb into a present participle and add something after it. We can reduce it to a gerund phrase as well. But most noun clauses are reduced to infinitive phrases. This is something I want you to understand right now. Most noun clauses are reduced to infinitive phrases. Infinitive phrases are phrases that start with a particle two followed by a base form of a verb, right? Two plus v one, right? And they can function as. Just give me a second, guys. Let me. Right, so uh, infinitive phrases, infinitive phrases, right? They can function as a noun, they can function as an adjective, and they can also function as an adverb as well, right? Let's just write it completely noun, adjective, and adverb. So we can reduce a noun cl clause to an adjective, sorry. An infinitive phrase. Uh, we generally reduce a noun clause to an infinitive phrase. It can be reduced to a gerund phrase as well. Gerund phrase, right? Gerund phrase. It is a phrase starting with a present part, uh, a present participle, an ing form of verb followed by the object or modifier, whatever, right? So it functions. A gerund phrase functions as a noun, right? It functions as a noun. So we can reduce a noun clause to a gerund phrase as well, but we generally reduce it to an infinitive phrase or we like most noun uh, clauses cannot be reduced to gerund phrases they just cannot uh, and not all noun clauses can be reduced this is something you have to understand as well but some noun clauses can be reduced and they are generally reduced to infinitive phrases and sometimes gerund phrases now let's understand the reduction okay we have a definition here let's understand uh, what we've written here Let's remove this. Let's clear this. <clears throat> a reduced noun clause is a noun phrase. So it's generally a phrase. We cannot reduce a noun clause to a word. Like 
it's really hard to do that right it's it's not something that you can strategically do it can just happen right but uh, it generally doesn't happen so we'll not consider it uh, noun clauses uh, can be reduced to phrases noun phrases right uh, so a reduced noun clause is a noun phrase that is reduced that is taken from a noun clause right a noun clause can be reduced to an infinitive phrase as i just said or a gerund phrase right both are types of noun phrases they both are types of noun phrases gerund phrases always function as a noun right infinitive phrases can function as a noun they can also function as an adjective or an adverb will depend on the context how you use them all right so uh, a noun clause can be reduced to an infinitive phrase or a gerund phrase to make a sentence more precise to eliminate information that is not needed that is probably extra i will not call it extra but that can be avoided all right but some sometimes taking that particular piece of information can change the meaning of the sentence or make it more ambiguous or just make it ambiguous all right so it's not always right or uh, advised to reduce a noun clause so hope you've understood what a reduced noun clause is now let's understand the reduction let's understand the process let's understand the science how to do that so we we'll look at different situations just give me a second all right uh, we we'll look at different situations where we we can do that right uh, uh, and before that let's just look at some noun clauses and their reductions all right example number 1 noun clause i don't know how i can get this job i don't know don't know what you can know something right so how i can get the job is what you don't know is the object of the verb no right so it's a noun clause working as the object of the verb no i don't know how i can get this job reduction i don't know how to get this job i don't know how to get this job so we've taken out the subject we've taken out the helping verb and we've used the particle to before it i'm going to explain the process in detail let's just look at these examples for now and understand how the reduction happens or how the reduction looks like how a reduced noun clause looks like all right second example uh she told us why we should invite ron to the party she told she subject told verb us indirect object she told us what this is what she told us why we should invite ron to the party this is what she told us right a noun clause working as the object the, the direct object of the verb told she told us what why we should invite ron to the party right conjunction subject moral verb uh, main verb all right it can be reduced to an infinitive phrase she told us why to invite ron to the party so we have taken another subject the moral verb used the particle to before it before the verb before the main verb of the noun clause invite and here we have an infinitive phrase a reduced noun clause so this is a reduced noun clause it's not a clause but since it has been taken from a noun clause we're calling it a reduced noun clause it's clearly not a clause right it doesn't have the subject verb combination third example he admitted that he stole my car he subject admitted verb in the past form admitted what you can admit something generally an action he admitted what that he stole my car this is what he admitted so this is the object of the verb admitted right now this can be reduced to a gerund phrase he admitted stealing my car so we've taken out the conjunction we have taken out the subject and we've changed the main verb into a present participle stealing right So stealing my car here is working as a noun is a gerund phrase is a gerund phrase right that is working as a noun object of the verb admitted admitted what this is what he admitted right so it's a reduced noun clause understand it's a reduced we'll call it a reduced noun clause but it's a gerund phrase all right so now you know what a reduced noun clause is and how it looks like So now let's look at all the different cases all the different situations uh, where we can reduce a noun clause to something generally an infinitive phrase it can be a gerund phrase as well all right case number 1 situation number 
Noun clauses starting with the following conjunctions. If noun clauses start with these conjunctions, we can most probably reduce them to infinitive phrases. Infinitive phrases. And these conjunctions are what, why, where, when, and how. Let's look at some examples and understand the process as well. Example number one. I don't know when we should call her. I do not know no, what when we should call her. So uh, this is the noun clause when we should call her working as the object of the verb. No, no, what when we should call her. Right. Let's look at the reduction. I don't know when to call her. I do not know no, what when to call her. So we've taken out the subject. We've taken out the model verb and we've used the particle to before call and we have to keep the question word where because that is going to show the relation. What kind of a relation the noun clause uh, shows? Is it uh, in terms of time, place, right, uh, manner of the action, or uh, whatever the type of relation it can show? All right. I don't know when to uh, call her. I don't know how to call her. I don't know uh, where to call her. All right. Example number two. I know where we should hide the money. I don't know what where we should hide the money. Right, this is what I know. So this is working as the object of the verb now. So where conjunction subject we should model helping verb uh, hide main verb the money object of the verb hide. Now I know where we'll drop the subject, we'll drop the model verb, we'll use to before the main verb of the noun clause. I know where to hide the money. I know where to hide the money. So this is a reduced noun clause. This is basically an infinitive. A uh, phrase uh, formed out of a noun clause. Third example. She does not know how she can beat her opponent. She does not know, know what, how she can do this, how she can beat her opponent. So how, question word, she subject, can uh, model verb beat. We can also say she does not know how she could beat her opponent. She does not know how she can beat her opponent. Beat main verb, her opponent is the object of the verb beat. How to, re how to reduce it? Simple. We'll drop the subject, we'll drop the model verb, and we'll use the particle be to before the verb beat. She does not know how to beat her opponent. She does not know how to beat her opponent. Now understand one thing. In this case, when your noun clause starts with these conjunctions, the noun clause must have one of these model auxiliary verbs. In this case, I'm, I'm saying, in this case, your noun clause must have one of these uh, model auxiliary verbs. Can, could, and should. If, uh, should, right. If your noun clause does not have any of these model auxiliary verbs, it is difficult or impossible to reduce it. I'll show you an example and make you understand. I don't know where we should call her. Let's rewrite this. I do not, I do not know where he is hiding. Can you reduce this noun clause? Sorry, where he is hiding? Can you, can you say, I don't know, I don't know where to hide? You can say that, but the meaning of the sentence completely changes. It means, this sentence means, I do not know where I can hide or where I should hide. And if I say, I do not know, I do not know how she did it, right? If I say, I do not know how she did it, did it uh, can I say, I don't know? how to do it how to do it this is incorrect because this uh, changes the meaning of the sentence the sentence does not mean the same it means i do not know how i can do it how i should do it but this is not what you mean right the meaning of the sentence now changes so it is important to note that in this case when your noun clause starts with uh, these conjunctions right where when why how uh, where it must have one of these model auxiliary verbs, can, could, and should. All right. Now, let's look at some important points related to this case. Point number one. 
Noun clauses that can be reduced to an infinitive phrase generally works as the object of the verb or preposition. Noun clauses that can be reduced to infinitive phrases or gerund phrases, um, or let's just let's just stick to infinitive phrases. Noun phrase uh, noun clauses that are reduced or that can be reduced to infinitive phrases generally work as the object of the verb or object of the preposition. Look okay, at these examples. Sentence, I know where I can invest your money. I know what, where I can invest your money, right? Working, this is the noun clause, working as the object of the verb, no. I know where I can invest your money. I know where to invest your money. Second, we are not sure about what we should do in this situation. We are not sure about, about is the preposition, about what, about this, what we do, what we should do in this situation. This is what we're not sure about. This is the noun clause working as the object of the preposition about, about what, about this, what we should do in this situation can be reduced to, we're not sure about what to do in this situation. We're not sure about, sorry, what is missing, what to do in this situation. So uh, noun clauses or reduced noun clauses generally work as um, object of the verb or object of the preposition. Can they be used as the subject of a sentence? Uh, we sometimes can do that, but they generally work as the object or the object of a preposition. But let me let me give you an example where a reduced noun clause functions as the subject of a sentence. Let's take this example only, all right? What we should do in this situation, what to do in this situation, all right? So let's say, what to do in this situation, what to do in this situation is tricky, is tricky to say, all right? So this is the subject, what to do in this situation. What we can or what we should do in this situation, in this situation is the noun clause and the reduction is what to do in this situation. So we can use it, the reduction as the subject or any other uh, thing as, as a noun, but we generally do not do that. We generally use it as the object of a verb or object of a preposition. This is point number one, all right? Point number two, if a noun clause does not have the model verb can, could, or should, which I already explained, it is not possible to reduce it you can reduce it, but the meaning of the sentence will not remain the same. It will change. All right. I know where I've invested your money. I know where to invest your money. Now, I can say that I know where I have invested your money. So I have the helping verb have, and then we have the main verb invested, right? And this is not in the base form. So can I say, I, I know where to invest your money. It is correct, but the meaning is not the same. This sentence has a completely different meaning. I know where to invest your money, meaning I know where we should invest your money or where we can invest your money. But the first sentence means I know where I have, I know where I've done something, where I've invested, where I've put your money. So the meaning of the sentence completely changes. All right. Please tell me how you made it possible. Please tell me how you made it possible. This is incorrect. This is completely incorrect. So either the meaning of the sentence changes or the sentence becomes incorrect. All right. This is point number two. Point number three, the subject of the sentence and the subject of the noun clause should be the same in order to reduce the noun clause. The subject of the sentence, the subject of the main clause and the subject <laughs> of the noun clause should be the same in order to reduce the noun clause and give the same meaning. Example number one, I know why you should take this offer. I know the subject of the main clause is I. All right. I know is the verb why you should take this offer. This is the noun clause. And in this noun clause, the subject is you. Right. And obviously these two are not the same. All right. So the subject of the main clause is different and the subject of the noun clause is different. All right, so here you uh, may have a situation or you definitely will have a situation the meaning where the meaning of the sentence changes or you may find it difficult to understand the meaning of the sentence. So when you say I know where to take this offer, 
why to take this offer it may have two different meanings i know why to take this offer like why i should or we should take this offer or i know why you should take this offer uh the predominant meaning is i know why i or we should take this offer we'll assume that the subject of this uh verb will be the subject of the main clause so if the subject of this verb in the noun clause is different from the main uh clause is different from the subject of the main clause write the sentence uh using a noun clause do not reduce it i know why you should take this offer and if you want to reduce it and still give the same meaning make sure the subject of the noun clause is the same as of the subject of the main clause all right second example max wants to know max wants wants what to know to know what how her mother can improve her driving skills reduction see understand this this one is tricky and interesting max wants to know how to improve her driving skills <laughs> all right so max is a name of a guy he wants to know how to improve her her driving skills so the meaning of the sentence completely changes and it just confuses you is he referring to himself or referring to a girl right this is not clear and most people will call this sentence grammatically incorrect because he wants to refer to himself but he is referring to somebody else this is what most people will understand from this uh situation right and it's happening because ha we have a different subject in the noun clause right the subject of the main clause and the subject of the noun clause are different that is why it's happening uh if the subject of the noun clause uh, was the same was the same as of the subject of uh the main clause we wouldn't have this confusion uh if we had uh, okay let's let's try this max wants to know no how he can he can improve something all right let's just say something so here the subject of the main clause is max and the subject of the noun clause noun clause is also this guy max so here it is very easy to reduce the noun clause max and the meaning also remains the same there is no confusion max wants to know how to improve something now there is no confusion we know uh, this this uh, verb is referring to the subject max this is clear so that is why we say uh, the subject of the main clause and the subject of the noun clause should be the same uh, in order to give the uh, give a clear meaning all right okay third example i will teach you how you can do it i will teach you how to do it i will teach you how to do it it means i will teach you how to do it how you can do it so here it it gives the meaning i will teach you how to do it so obviously i'm teaching you all right i will teach you third example i will teach you how you can do it i will teach you so we have the indirect object now the action in the main clause will refer to the indirect object now i will teach you how you can do it i will teach you how you can do it's you who's going to do it i will teach you how to do it how to do it so this action is referring to this indirect object you i will teach you how to do it all right this is the third point that you have to understand that you have to keep in mind all right so we've just uh, mastered the case number 1 the situation number 1 where we can reduce a noun clause to an infinitive phrase right where a noun clause starts with conjunction such as uh, when uh, why where how and uh, what all right case number 2 situation number 2 reduce a noun clause to an infinitive phrase when the noun clause are preceded by the following verbs so when you have these verbs want forget promise hope decide demand pretend wish claim uh would like would love like love intent and let's let's just remove these verbs right let's not add these verbs 
right? Uh, okay. So when you have these verbs, one, forget, promise, hope, decide, demand, pretend, wish, and claim, you can have a noun clause after them. And uh, that noun clause can be reduced to an infinitive phrase. All right. Let me just have a sip of water. Wow. <clears throat> Let's understand this situation as well. Let's look at the example number one. I have forgotten. Forget, forgot, forgotten. All right. I have forgotten what? Forgotten that I have met you. This is what I have forgotten. I had met you, right, in the past. And I have completely forgotten this incident that I have met you. Now. This is a noun clause starting with the conjunction that and all the noun clauses in this case will start with the conjunction that. You can observe this. I've observed it. You can also observe it, right? So I've forgotten that I have met you. I have forgotten to have met you. I have forgotten. Uh, we can just uh, say I have forgotten to meet you. We can also say this. This also gives the meaning. But since this happened in the past, I'm going to use the infinitive in the past form. Right? Uh, the perfect infinitive. I have forgotten to have met you. Alright? I have forgotten to meet you. We can also say I have forgotten to meet you. So we take the conjunction out. We take the subject out. We, we take the helping verb out. And we form the infinitive using the verb. The main verb and the object or modifier. Right, and we, we add the particle to before the main verb. Second example, she has promised that she will return my money soon. She has promised, promised, you can promise something, right? She has promised what? That she will return my money soon. So, we'll take the conjunction out, we'll take the subject out, we'll take the uh, model verb out, we'll use to before the main verb. And there we have a reduced noun clause. An infinitive phrase. She has promised to return my money soon. She has promised to return my money soon. All right, let's look at more examples. Example number four. I hope that I see you again. I hope something. You can hope something, right? I hope, hope what? That I see you again. I hope to see you again. I hope. I hope to see you again. I hope that I pass the exam. I hope to pass this exam. Right? Example number five. You pretend that you're fine. You pretend that you're fine, but you're not. Right? You pretend something. You can pretend something. Right? You pretend that you're fine. Right? So you pretend. So if you have a to be form of verb, you'll use be as the main verb. And before be, be, you'll use the particle to. You pretend that you're fine. You pretend to be fine. You pretend to be fine. You pretend. Let me give you more examples. You pretend that you are stupid. Right? You pretend to be stupid. Uh, Okay, let me give you one more example. He was pretending, pretending that he uh, was ill. He was pretending to be ill. All right. So if the noun clause has the main verb in to be form, is M R was verb, right? We'll use B as the main verb and we'll use to before it. All right. Easy peasy. Okay. Last example. Example number six. I can prove that I'm, I'm an asset to this group. I can prove that I am an asset to this group. So we again have a linking verb. All right. To be form of verb. So we'll say I can prove. You can prove something, right? So that I am an asset to this group is the noun clause working as the object of the verb prove. Right? Pretend is the verb. Hope is the verb. Prove is the verb. I can prove to be an asset to this group. 
so we'll take out the conjunction the subject to be form of a verb to be and the remaining part of the clause i can prove to be an asset to this group i can prove that i am amazing i can prove or i can prove that i am the best teacher in the school i can prove to be the best teacher in this school all right so this is very easy when you have these verbs and uh, when you have a noun clause after uh, these verbs that noun clause can most probably be reduced to an infinitive phrase and how you already know <clears throat> important points about this situation important points to note right after these verbs we only use or we use we use noun clause starting with the conjunction that only all right i have already told you so we only use <coughs> that noun clause that noun clause starting with the conjunction that she claims that she is a doctor i wish that that can be omitted as well that i could see you right now i wish that i could see you right now i wish i could see you right now she claims that she is a doctor she claims she is a doctor so we can omit the conjunction as well right i'll show you more examples i hope that i see you again i hope i see you again you pretend that you find you pretend you find i can prove that i am an i am an asset to this group i can prove i am an asset to this group so after these verbs when you have a noun clause you can omit the conjunction that as well you can not use it like if you do not want to use it you can omit it all right this is point number 1 <clears throat> point number 2 i'm just having some problems with my throat today uh <clears throat> uh point number 2 we can still reduce the noun clause to an infinitive phrase even if the subject of the noun clause subject of the noun clause clause is missing is different from the main clause is different from the subject of the sentence that is the main clause but the infinitive in that case the reduced noun clause will be in the passive voice but the infinitive phrase which is the reduced reduced noun clause is changed into the passive voice that is not changed in the active voice that is changed in the passive voice i'll show you how and this is really really important to note example number 1 no pain no gain right we hope that they pay us well we hope we is the subject hope is the verb this is the noun clause we hope that they pay us well so the subject in the noun clause is they which is different from the subject of the main clause which is we all right in this case you cannot change the uh, noun clause in the infinitive uh, phrase in the active voice you cannot say we hope to pay us well this does not even make any sense right we hope to pay us well does not make any sense right uh now in this case uh what happens is uh, the uh, object in the noun clause is the subject of the main clause right if that is not the case you cannot reduce the noun clause you just cannot do that if you have a different subject different from the main clause if the subject of the noun clause is different from the subject of the main clause you must have uh, the uh, the object of the uh, noun clause the object of the verb of the noun clause or object of the preposition of the noun clause must be the subject of the main clause in order to reduce it to an infinitive phrase this is really really important to note so i hope that i hope that they pay us it's us i hope that they pay us us means we well so we receive the action all right so i hope or we hope it's not i we hope to be paid well we hope to be paid will use the passive form right be b uh right v1 v plus v3 right kill be killed right pay 
we pay it all right let's remove this example number 2 they demand that the company give them more parks they demand they demand that the company this is the noun clause that the company give them more parks so the subject of the main clause is they and the subject of the noun clause is the company which are different obviously right so we cannot change this noun clause to an infinitive phrase in the active voice we cannot do that because the subject of the noun clause is different all right had the subject uh, been the same <clears throat> just give me a second guys <clears throat> so had the subject been the same we would have uh, reduced the noun clause in the active voice but we here cannot do that so they demand to be given more perks by the company so the company is going to perform an action upon the doer of the action that is they they demand the they demand that the company give them give whom them more perks so they receive the action the action in the noun clause they demand to be given more perks by the company they demand to be given more perks by the company if the object in the noun clause is not the subject of the main clause this noun clause cannot be reduced to an infinitive phrase at all okay let me show you uh they demand that the company company uh pay this is the subjective mood a uh, subjunctive mood that's why we're not using the singular form right they demand that the company pay ria well all right so here obviously the subject of the noun clause is different and the object is also not the subject right now here we cannot say they demand to to be paid to be paid well this means they demand that the company or somebody uh pays them well right if i say they demand to pay well how can they demand something that they do this is also illogical right like this this does not make any sense so understand if the subject of the noun clause is is different the object in the noun uh, clause should be the subject of the main clause in order to reduce the noun clause uh, to an infinitive phrase all right in order to have a reduced noun clause all right case number 3 a sentence uh, making a request order command or asking permission so if your sentence is basically about making a request or giving an order giving a command or asking permission using these verbs you can have a noun clause after these verbs and that noun clause can be reduced to an infinitive phrase right you can have a reduced noun clause let's look at some examples example number 1 she ordered that i clean the dishes she ordered that i do something that i clean the dishes she ordered you can order something what did she order this is what she ordered that i clean the dishes right she ordered now here understand how the reduction happens so uh the subject of the noun clause is changed into um an objective case the objective case right so i is the subjective case subjective case subjective case and me is the objective case so uh we'll write the subject of the sentence the verb then the uh, subject of the noun clause will be the object right indirect object indirect object then we'll use the particle to and then the verb in the base form and the rest of the noun clause she ordered that i clean the dishes she ordered i will change into me she ordered me then we'll use the particle to to clean the dishes she ordered that rahul clean uh, the dishes she ordered rahul to clean the dishes right uh 
I request that you let her go. I request that you let her go. I request you. So you is both the subjective case and the objective case. So we don't have to do anything. I request you to let her go. Third, I request that you let her go. Oh, this is same. All right, my bad. Okay. Uh, we can have one more example. Um, Mm. Mm. Give me a second. Order we've used. Command is just uh, the same request we've used. Uh, bag. All right. Uh, we beg that you accept accept this offer. Right. We beg you to accept this offer all right uh, uh okay let's have more examples i want you to understand the situation completely so let me give you more examples uh i ask that you leave that you leave this is odd to your ears right i ask that you leave i ask i ask you to leave all right. Uh, all right. So this is how this situation works. So when you have these uh, verbs, uh, and when you have a noun clause after these verbs, uh, the noun clause can be reduced to an inflated phrase, and you know the process as well. All right. Okay. An important note: if an indirect object is there, right? So. Uh, in these examples, we don't have an indirect object. She ordered something. So we have the direct object. I request something. Direct object. I request something. Direct object. I ask something. Direct object. So if you have a direct, sorry, indirect object after the verb, and then you have the direct object in the form of a noun clause, it does not mean the indirect object is going to be the doer of the noun clause. The subject of the main clause can be the subject, the doer of the noun clause too. All right, difficult to understand. Let's look at this example and understand this. He promised, he promised me. So we have the indirect object, object as well. He promised me that he will be back by tomorrow. He promised me that he will be back by tomorrow. So uh, you'll think the, uh, if you, if I say, he promised me to be, to be, wait, to be back by tomorrow. He promised me to be back by tomorrow, right? So, uh, I'm not doing this action. Coming back, I am not doing that. It is the subject that is going to be back by tomorrow, right? But here, in these examples, it is, uh, it is the object, it is the object, uh, me, which is clear, which is clearly the subject of the noun clause. So there is nothing to worry about. All right. Okay. Last case, case number four. Reducing noun clauses to gerund phrases. Yes, we can also reduce a noun clause to a gerund phrase. When noun clauses are preceded by verbs such as admit, deny, and mention, the cases are very limited. So understand this carefully. So when uh, a noun a clause is preceded by these words admit deny and mention we may have other verbs as well but these are the verbs i could think of so there we there we go all right um, so when uh, you have a noun clause preceded by any of these verbs we can reduce the noun clause to a gerund phrase all right so we can have a reduced noun clause in the form of a gerund phrase <clears throat> Give me a second. All right, example number one. I'm alive, don't worry. Not gonna die. Gonna do a lot of things. He admitted that he stole my car. He admitted, admitted, admit. You can admit something. He admitted that he stole my car. So you can change this noun clause to a gerund phrase. 
So you'll take out the conjunction, you'll take out the subject, you'll change the verb in whatever form it is, you'll change it in to ing form. He admitted stealing my car. Simple stealing my car. If you want to use the perfect form, you'll say he admitted having stolen my car. He admitted having stolen my car. If you want to refer to an action that happened before the action in the main verb, uh, in the main clause, right? You'll use the perfect form. He admitted having stolen my car. Second example, she did not mention, mention, she did not mention, mention what? That she was fired from the job. She did not mention this. She did not mention what? That she was fired from the job. So she did not mention, take this out, take this out, take this out, fired from the job. So I cannot say she did not mention firing from the job because here she's not doing the action. He is here doing the action of stealing. But here she did not fire somebody. She got fired. So we'll use the gerund but in the passive form. She did not, she did not mention receiving an action being fired being fired from the job she did not mention that she uh, killed a dog she did not mentioned she did not mention that she killed a dog she did not mention killing a dog all right she did not mention that she was uh, slapped by Rahul, she did not mention being slapped by Rahul. So, if she or if the subject is doing the action, the gerund uh, phrase will be in the active voice. If the subject is, is receiving the action, uh, the gerund phrase will be in the passive form. All right. We have one more example. Example number three. Confess. I confessed that I flirt with my friends sometimes. I generally do that. I confessed that I flirt with my friends sometimes. Just kidding. I don't do that. So I confessed to you confess to something. Right. I confessed to now we can use a gerund phrase after. I confess to flirt flirting with my friends sometimes. I confess to an action. I confessed to flirting with my friends sometimes. I confessed that I do this once in a while sometimes all right so here's how you can uh, reduce a noun clause to a gerund phrase so that's all about today's lesson i hope you know what a noun uh, clause is now uh, what a reduced noun clause is how to reduce it what are the situations where we can reduce a noun clause to an infinitive phrase or a gerund phrase hope all the situations their important points to note Hope everything is clear. Hope you enjoyed the lesson. Hope you loved it. If you did, hit the like button. If you guys are new to the channel, make sure you subscribe to the channel and make sure you hit that notification button as well so that every single time I publish a lesson, you get notified and you get to watch the video right away. Right? And if you have something to say, write it in the comment section below. If you have a question, write it in the comment section below. Uh, you can follow uh, my Facebook group, my Insta page. Links are in the description. And that's it. I'll see you guys very soon. Till then, keep learning. Have fun. I'm out now, Scar.